hello beautiful people you welcome back to my channel if it's your first time hello and welcome back so today i am here to share my knowledge with you again i found this heart i just came across this beautiful crinoline heart on pinterest and i just felt i should try it out i did i documented the whole procedure and i'm here to share my knowledge with you please do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you're here to join us here please hit the like button and share with others. So let's get started. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be using for my base. It's actually blocked with paper mat, and I use this wooden um, object you're seeing to make this shape. Okay, so I have, have other materials like my hot wire. I have my my bias strip, needle and thread. Uh, in place of needle and thread, I may actually be using fishing line while working. This fishing line is about 0.25 mm. I also have about 0.30 mm. You could use any of this. I have UHU glue. I have crinoline. The crinoline is about 6.5 inches width and the total length i have is about 10 yards or 10 meters 6.5 inches is the width of this mine crinoline i have a pair of scissors glue gun and the glue stick i also have my elastic band you could use the plastic headband in place of this like i said earlier i've blocked my base and this is it is dry and the next thing is for us to wire it so i have my art wire and what i, I did was to measure the mold or the art block this exact art block i used in blocking it i just measured it and um, i got my art wire okay so i'm trimming off the excesses i already did that i'm just trying to smoothen it up and do it perfectly before i proceed to the next step so i have my art wire so i just measured the mosh can you see i just measured the round to get the exact length of art wire i'll be needing so i have about 20.5 inches and I added extra 3 inches, about 2.5 to 3 inches is fine for us to overlap the wire. Okay, so that's the measurement I use in cutting out my wire. So I'm going to place the two ends of the wire together, my paper tape, which I'm going to be using to join the two ends of my wire. So I have the two ends of the wire brought together and I'll be using my paper tape to secure them. Remember that I had a three inches extra while I was cutting my wire. Okay, so that three inches has to go while you overlap. I mean you overlap by 1.5 inches on one side and 1.5 inches on the other side making it the three inches so that at the end of the day it's going to fit into the base properly if not it may become bigger or it may become too small if you don't do the measurements accurately okay if you don't overlap by the extra inches we added earlier it will actually show so i'm using my paper tape now to wrap over to secure the ends of the wire together is when you're wrapping your the two ends of your wire together make sure that you don't have it too swollen or else it will show it will actually be visible on your fascinator or your art so i'm just going to be inserting the wire into the base as you can see now i went ahead to use my alt glue to seal the wire to the ends of the base as you can see okay at this point you need to be very careful you're applying little glue and you just apply pressure just cover up like that and you apply pressure so i'll be doing that round 
and once that is done the next step is for us to start designing our base okay so i have my needle and fishing line yes i've threaded my needle with fishing line and i'm going to start using my crinoline to design this base at this point i would like you to please watch the whole process i may not be able to explain like that till the end but i would like you to just watch so you can see all i was doing okay just to design this okay so i'm just starting by folding my crinoline into two this way and i bring the ends together bring the ends together like this and i'm going to tie okay so i'm using my thread to tie one end of the crinoline And to seal the ends of the fraying edge of the crinoline properly, I applied my glue and then I just allow it dry a little. Then I just press it down as you can see. So that will seal the edge of the crinoline. Now I'm just going to go ahead and um, start tacking my crinoline to my base. Okay, so please watch what I'm doing. I'm using my needle and fishing line for this. The point I just marked is just going to be the back of the art so that will give me a guideline or just that will give me a guide on how to go about designing the base so i'm just starting from where i have my left thumb okay i'll be using my needle and thread to do the tacking and i'll just tack the crinoline like that round the base i've tied the crinoline down and that's my starting point like i said earlier so i'm just wrapping the crinoline around the base Remember, I folded the crinoline into two, so I picked the two edge or the two yes, the two edges like that while I wrap round. Okay, so I'm going to be doing some tackings like that while I take the crinoline round. I'll be lining the inner part of my base, so whatever tacking I do that may look rough inside will definitely be covered. Okay, so you can see me using my needle and fishing line to tack. You need to, I mean, tack the crinoline you know, to it. And the way I'm tacking on the outer part of the fascinator or art, you will notice that the thread does not really show invisible tacking. I can actually tack anyhow from inside, but from outside, make sure that the tackings are not that visible. I've gotten to this point where I'll be making a row, so I just uh, measured what I will need, what, what will be enough for me to make my rows. Okay, I have about 12 inches from that point, and I trim up the excess crinoline. And I tied the end like I did the other time. Then I finished up by making a rose. Please watch, just watch what I'm doing.
so i'm done attaching the three layers of crinoline to my base and this is what i have left from the 10 years i started with from the 10 years that is left i actually took off about 30 inches yes i kept that as i actually used that later in the video so this is what i have left right now after cutting out the 30 inches and i just folded the crinoline i folded it into two i tied the end and i'm sewing the stitches from one end to the other end At this point, while sewing my loose stitches all the way down, I discovered that my thread became short. So I had to just pull the thread. I just pulled the thread together it at this point so that I can have enough thread to continue sewing loose stitches. I just went ahead to sew loose stitches like that all the way down. I sew my loose stitches all to the other end and I just pull like that to gather it up and, and I went ahead to arrange it properly. So our design is um, done and I just placed it like that on this part of the fascinator or art and I tacked it down. Now the crinoline I have left now is what I cut out earlier that I kept aside earlier. So I'm just using that to still design this uh, beautiful hat. Please watch this part. As you can see, I folded the crinoline into two and I've tied one end. So I'll just use it to this round. You can see the way I'm just trying to wrap the crinoline from the from that part of. From that part of the fascinator base you know it all depends on creativity you can always form something different from this okay once you understand the technique so i just uh, place my cream in like that i'm going to tack it like that round I've taken the crinoline around the base to the point I want it to be. So I just measured about 16 inches. I just measured about 16 inches and I cut off the excess. 
so i'm just going to tie that in and i'm going to use it to design that part of the fascinator So at this point this is what I have and I'll just go ahead and attach the elastic I'll just use my needle and thread to tack it to the point I want it to be the elastic is about 13 inches about okay about 15 inches it depends on how stretchy the elastic is okay it could be 13 it could be 14 and I just tied each of the end and I'm going to tack it down to my fascinator base as you can see the elastic is fixed to the fascinator and it's as firm as much as possible then I just went ahead to line the inside to cover all our tackings and all that. I covered this part with my bias strip as we normally do. I also covered every rough edge with accessories or embellishments. Okay, and so we have come to the end of the tutorial. I hope you have learned one or two things. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit me like, share, and then subscribe if you are here too. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you all in our next tutorial.